Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to process a silhouette sunset image in Lightroom. Before we get started with this video tutorial, let's have a look and see what it is that we're going to be working with. This is the final image, but I'm just going to press the backslash key and we can see the original. This was shot in Venice and it's really quite an interesting sunset sky, but the foreground here in the image wasn't doing much for me. So what I decided to do was to play up the silhouette effect and to actually make it into a silhouette image with a really interesting sort of silhouette and a really nice sky. So that's basically what we're going to be doing. So I've gone ahead already and I've made a virtual copy of the image. So let's just switch to the virtual copy and let's hide the film strip as we don't need that any longer. I'm going to bring in my develop panel. I'm going to look at the image as a whole right now and what I want to do to start off with is just to straighten this a little bit because it's a bit crooked and I always find it really off-putting when an image is crooked. And now I'm going to look at the basic processing but I've just seen up here that this is been processed with Process Version 2003. It's actually an image that I've had in Lightroom for a long time. It's come through a number of versions. So I'm just going to alt click on this to bring it back up to Process Version 2012. And that's a better processing version. It's got better noise reduction and things like that in it. Now with this image I want to not only bring up the sky but I also want to bring back down these buildings. So while I might open up the sky a little bit I certainly want to make sure that my blacks are black. So I want to get this sort of black feeling along the silhouette. So I'm sort of working with a bit of compromise here trying to open up exposure but also decrease it down here. I'm going to look and see where my white point is. So I'm holding the Alt key and I'm just going to drag up until I see my whites. Now that's a long way up and probably a lot further than I really want to be with this image, but let's just see how we go with that. Now with shadows, again, I want to send my shadows down. I can bring back a little bit of detail in the sky if I want, but I really want this shadow area to be quite a bit darker. And highlights, well, let's just see where the highlights are going to be. I think I'm a bit happier with the highlights up a little bit, paying attention to the sky. Now to deal with this foreground and darken it, the easiest solution is to use the graduated filter. So I'm going to click here on the graduated filter and I'm just going to drag it up here. I'm going to hold the shift key as I do that because I want it to run straight across the image. And I also want it to have a really, really small distance between these two bars because that means that the distance between the filter being applied fully and not at all is really, really short. I'm going to place it just along that horizon line. Now it's got a really high exposure on it and highlights and contrasts and things. I'm not really worried about that right now. All I'm worried about is getting this line straight and in position. Now I'm just going to double click on the effect button here or the effect word because that just zeroes everything back out. And now I want to bring down the exposure. I want to see what contrast effect I need and probably in actual fact adding contrast is going to work for me here. And then bringing down highlights and bringing down shadows because I really want this to be black. And so I'm just going to click done and let's just see what we've got when we click done. So I'm just going to zoom in here and see if I can see a line across where that gradient was and it's not there so it's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the effect and I don't think that's going to show up as the image is printed. So let's just zoom back out again. From here I can do all sorts of things. One thing I might consider is enhancing the sky with a radial filter. So I could grab the radial filter here, just drag over the image. So right now the effect that I'm applying is being applied on the outside of this radial filter. I want to invert it, so I'm just going to click to invert it. And of course, whatever's happening in the middle isn't very happy either, but it's certainly happening in the right place. So I'm going to double click on effect to just hide everything right now, just reset the settings. Just size this out a little bit and now I'm just going to play with perhaps a little bit of additional contrast in here and perhaps a little bit of extra exposure. Bit of clarity. And maybe even a little bit of extra saturation. 
you want to use a fairly high feather on your radial filter because you won't want to see the edges of where the radial filter has been applied. Now back in the basic panel, I'm also going to crank up clarity and vibrance a little bit just to enhance the overall saturation of colors in the image. And now let's go and have a look at some sharpness. Now with sharpness, I'm going to wind it up really quite high to start off with. Now because the image is relatively sharp, I think that it can take a relatively small radius. I'm getting a really good result in here. And for detail, I don't want a very big detail value. So I'm setting that at about 20, just higher than the radius. For masking, I do want a good mask. So I'm just going to drag over this. I don't want to sharpen the water at all. And I really just want to sharpen that silhouette, not a lot into the sky. Having applied that sharpening mask and the sharpening radius and detail, I'm now going to back off the sharpening just a little bit just to get a sharpened effect, but not overly sharpened. Now, if I look in here and I'm saying any noise, I can remove that noise here in the noise reduction area. So I could remove a little bit of luminance noise if I see that sort of grainy noise and also color noise. Although this image, even for the time of day that it was shot, it's not showing a lot of color noise. I think probably because it was a JPEG image that the color noise has already been dealt with in the JPEG conversion. So if I saw a little bit of color in the buildings here, if they were a little bit light, then I would come in here with the adjustment brush and I would just paint over them with a really low exposure. And that would just allow me to darken that edge. I had to do it in the original image that I showed you before we started this video. But in actual fact, this time I've nailed my conversion a little bit better. And I don't think that I need to fix up any of the buildings. So let's see the before and after. This is the image that we had out of the camera. Interesting sky, some sort of silhouette on the horizon, but nothing very nice happening in the foreground here with the water. This is the this is now the edited version of the image. We've played up the silhouette along the skyline and played up the beautiful sky. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications, including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.